In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, exponential decay. Uh, exponential growth is a very similar concept, but I'm just going to focus on decay here. Uh, they're both very much related. This, uh, in this experiment, uh, a ball was dropped, and it was dropped from 110 centimeters. So the initial height, so it, it hasn't been dropped yet, so like at the, at the beginning, the height was 110, and then the first bounce it got up to 93 centimeters and 80.1 in the second. The highest it got in the third bounce was 67.1, etc. And we can see all of them. So we're going to plot these uh, just to see what it like. So there's the 110 it started at. So first bounce was uh, was at 93. So we'll put a uh, uh, dot right there at 93, uh, just a little bit below 95, and then 80.1 just over the, it's fair, a little bit over the 80, uh, 67.1, uh, the 57, and I'm just plotting all these points. Uh, that's the 34.5, the 29.9, pretty close to 30, and 26. And so if you only plot the first few, you might think it's a straight line because it looks fairly straight, but you can see it starts to curve here. And that's um, one of the characteristics of exponential growth or decay curves. Uh, it is a curve, it's not a straight line. It's not linear growth or linear decay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to investigate um, what kind of a relationship is between these. And uh, if you're watching this uh, tutorial, you may have investigated linear functions and learned about them before, and also quadratic functions. So we've taken a look at both of those in the, uh, the course I made this video for uh, in Ontario. Uh, but uh, so first of all, if we take a look at the uh, 110 and 93. Let's look at the first differences. So I'm going to bring my calculator over here. So to find the difference, between how much how much has changed from 110 down to 93, I would go 93 minus 110, and it's gone down 17. So I would click. So there's a difference of 17 there, and then from uh, the next one from 80.1 minus 90. Now notice I'm subtracting the 80.1 minus 93. I'm not going 93 minus 80.1 because I want to change from this down to this. This is the final place like as we go from this number to this number. So that's why I'm subtracting them in that order. So this would be negative 12.9 and actually I should do this next here. So let's do another one. From 67.1, uh, from 80.1 to 67.1, it's gone down 13. And uh, so we can now take a look at, so you see the, the differences, the first differences are not all the same. Actually, these are fairly close, but they're certainly not the same. It went down 17, then down 12.9, and then down 13. So, so we know it isn't linear. So now let's take a look at the second differences. If we go... Uh, Bring the calculator back. Uh, from negative, I'm going to take the negative 12.9. I want to change from here to here. So negative 12.9 subtract negative 17. So that difference, it actually from negative 17 to negative 12.9, it actually went up 4.1. I'm going to do the next one before I write it on the PowerPoint here. So negative 13 subtract negative 12.9. And that changes, uh, well, it's not much. Those are almost the same. So it went down 0.1. So there's, here comes the uh, 4.1 and the down 0.1. So they're not the same. So it's not a quadratic relationship. And see, if you look at here, you know, you might think, well, maybe it's a quadratic relationship. Maybe it's a parabola. Maybe the vertex can be around here and it's going to start going back up. But of course, that wouldn't make sense for the ball. It's not going to start suddenly bouncing higher. So, so let's get uh, rid of those. And let's look at, see, exponential functions have not an adding or subtracting relationship between their function values. They have a multiplication relationship between the function values. And so I want to know what I'm multiplying 110 by to get 93, and then what do I multiply 93 by to get 80.1, etc. So if I take 93 and divide it by the 110 above it, see, it's about 0.85. If I, so if I multiply 110 by... 0.85. I'm going to get something pretty close to 93. Okay. See, this is data that was collected, so it's not going to be exact. Um, so, so that uh, multiplication relationship is uh, see, it's actually multiplying by about 0.85. Let's do the next one. So, what do I multiply 93 by to get 80.1? Well, let's divide the 80.1 by the 93. Oh, and it's about 0.86, so this would be times 0.86. Let's do another one. 
what do we multiply the 80.1 by to make 67.1? So 80, 67.1 divided by the uh, bounce be above it, it's about 0.84. And let's do another one. So let's go the 57 divided by the 67.1, and we get about 0.85 again. And uh, I'm not going to do them all individually here. The rest of them, there's the rest of them. You can see it's all right around 0.85. Okay, we could average them out, I suppose, get more uh, precise what the uh, relationship is. But uh, you can see what that, that seems to be. So um, that's the relationship between um, the function values in an exponential relationship. This is decay. So we're multiple. See, so you're actually losing about 15% of the height in each bounce, or it's bouncing to about 85% of the original, the previous height. So this is decay. If it was growth, then these numbers would be going up, and the multiplying factor would be something over one. So we'll get into that in other tutorials. So let me show you something here. Um, here's my graph. That's actually the same points as here. A little different scale. That looks slightly different. But so if I I plot in here my 110 times, so it's 110, start from 110, and we're at the multiplying factor is about 0.85 to the power of x. We'll get into this one in a moment here. So if I graph that, I'm going to turn that function on now. You see that very closely approximates those. It's even maybe a better fit than this one I graphed over here. So what I did was um, I took all Let's make this a little bit bigger. I took all these uh, points and from the table here, and I ended them in two lists in my graphing calculator. There's the last one, 26. And so I'm going to perform, uh, it's called a, well, there's all kinds of regression formulas in here. Um, I don't want to do linear or quadratic. I want to do an exponential one. So there we go. There's the exponential one. So I have the numbers in uh, list one and list two and so it's going to come up with an equation for me so it's using as it's uh, now so that's the initial value that's the 110 uh, so it's approximately at 109.4 approximately uh, and so that's the base here so it's very close to about 0.85 I used so 109.398 and this is my base is about 0.85 that was the second function I had in here and I've actually turned that one on and graph it and you can see a graphing here coming along, but it's tracing almost exactly on top of the other function. If I go trace, okay, I'm on the plots right now. If I up arrow, I'm on the second function, the one I just plotted. If I'm if I'm if I down arrow, I'm on the the one I typed in that I got by estimating. So, but that's just a little bit about what gro exponential decay looks like. A growth is a very similar concept, and we'll get that into that in other tutorials. So that's the sort of an introduction into uh, exponential, uh, more decay, but growth is a very similar concept. And that's the end of the tutorial.